I think you touched on something there that I'm, I'm sure will be kind of a theme for the rest of the discussion here. But so I think one of the one of the challenges we face as an industry is sometimes people talk in genera- generalities of you have internal combustion engine, a um, battery electric and hydrogen powered for the most part fuel cell electric uh, as kind of these three distinct camps. And we talk sometimes about like it's one versus one versus one and one one's going to win. But I, I think that's far from the truth, especially as you, you look at how different the boundary conditions and requirements are for different application segments and, and, and then how things are going to evolve over time as infrastructure changes. So I think we'll talk about a, a few different applications. Well, first, first of all, I guess, what, what are your thoughts overall? You're, you're in the, the field more than I am. Yeah, I think that um, it, often um, there, there does seem to be some opposition of, you know, uh, and, and division into camps. Um, and as you say, you could divide it into internal combustion engines and fuel cells and batteries. But, but the truth is all of those technologies um, will play a role. And, and if we just focus on fuel cells specifically, because that's the um, industry that I'm in, um, there isn't any such thing as a, a fuel cell vehicle without some form of battery, even if it's only to start up. But, but very often, um, a, a much more prominent role in battery will play in a fuel cell system uh, to recapture uh, regenerative energy and, and also just to make the best sort of economic sense. Um, so, you know, there's all, all sort of different um, ranges of hybridization between batteries and fuel cells that, that are appropriate. Um, but um, it, it, at least as far as fuel cell systems go, it's never only fuel cells. So it, it, it isn't terribly useful to um, make those kinds of strict divisions. They, they can be more divisive um, and you know, take, make us take longer to get to uh, practical results than if we're really looking carefully at the best ways to optimize systems. Yeah, and maybe maybe not uh, maybe a little bit of a silly question, but just to, to touch on it in case anyone's thinking about this. So you you mentioned so fuel cell electric vehicles of of any type have some type of battery. Um, I guess the, the question is okay, why if you're going to have a battery, wouldn't you just be pure battery electric? My, my my read is it's a much smaller battery, right? Even if it's playing a prominent role, and then now you're able to use the fuel cell as essentially a range extender or a generator that charges that battery. And wait, but can you speak to kind of what the benefit yeah. there is, what, what's the role of the fuel cell and something like that? Very often what you just described is the case that there's just a, a, a range issue associated with the practical size of a, a, a battery on a battery only vehicle that a fuel cell can solve because the energy storage density of um, the fuel cell and hydrogen tanks combined um, in some applications is better than the battery. And you know, we, we found in some analyses and you know, this there's almost not a day that goes by where we have discussions with OEMs who are looking to electrify, and and the ones that we're talking to are OEMs in the medium and heavy duty space, so commercial vehicles, industrial vehicles, as well as other applications, uh, maritime and aerospace and and, and rail, um, where you know the analysis is done um, from engineers on their side and and. You know the battery that would be required would would simply overwhelm um, the payload capability. So we were talking to a class eight developer, truck developer, yesterday that is developing um, electrified um, long haul trucks, and and to do what they need to do, what the fleet operators need to do with a battery only system would the entire payload of capacity of the truck would be taken up by the battery. So it's just a, it's just a non-starter. Yeah. Um, so this is, this is why fuel cells are, are really intriguing, um, uh, particularly to um, manufacturers of larger vehicles and also of commercial vehicles with higher um, uh, auxiliary power requirements, like cement mixers or refuse trucks or refrigerated trucks things that have to do more than just propel the vehicle, but actually do some work. Okay. Um, yeah. So that, that's a pretty um, strong uh, application for, for fuel cells. 